Well, good evening and welcome to our regular meeting for February. We like to begin each meeting with a moment of silence and would invite you to join us if you would like. First item on the agenda is approval of tonight's agenda, February 18th, regular meeting. I have a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve um, the regular board meeting agenda for February 18th, 2019. I'll second that. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Our Pledge of Allegiance and School Highlight tonight, presented by Walhalla Elementary. Isaac Kennedy with me. Isaac Kennedy is a fifth grade student, and his mom Julie teaches in our district as well. So, Isaac, if you'll come up and let us in the pledge. Come on up here and face the, face the camera for us so you. And so some background information on me is I 
just graduated from Clemson University with my master's in teaching and learning with a STEAM concentration, and I'm STEAM certified. And um, Emily and I worked together last year to start a STEAM team and bring to life some of the things that we thought were important for our students to learn about. So some information about STEAM. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, the Arts, and Mathematics. You might have heard of the acronym STEM, and um, a lot of research recently has shown the benefit of adding in that A and adding in the arts and humanities as a way to engage um, <coughs> a diverse population of learners, including um, female students and also students that are minorities. So STEAM uses problem-based learning to develop critical thinking skills, and problem-based learning is when we pose a problem to our students and then we allow them to draw on different disciplines in order to solve that problem, and that includes you know, science, technology, and engineering, but also um, writing, reading, researching, and using those 21st century skills. It also introduces students to the creative and engineering design processes, and these processes are important because they teach the children you know, to think of ideas, but also to persevere in finding solutions to them. And one of the factors that um, is really important in the engineering design process is not giving up and starting again if they fail, and we just think it's really important to teach our children to have that growth mindset and to keep going even if their idea doesn't work out the first time. It also offers our students meaningful um, experiences and collaboration and it encourages creativity and ingenuity. And of course, as Mrs. Les said, it builds those 21st century work skills like technological literacy, collaboration, communication, and innovation, which gives the students a foundation for um, the jobs that are available here in our Tony County industries. Um, like I said, it's really important to us that we're engaging students in STEM disciplines in these upper elementary grades because a lot of research shows that students begin to disidentify with math and science at ages nine to 11. And so if we can kind of bring in STEAM team and motivate them and engage them to pursue the STEAM disciplines, then we give them a better shot at pursuing those STEM careers. And that's especially true for girls and um, students that are minorities. We have a pretty big population of in um, Oakland County. And finally, um, based on current research plus some of my own classroom-based research, there's a statistically significant increase in student motivation when students engage in STEAM learning and also in problem-based learning, which are um, some of the things that we give students in STEAM team. So to sum up, like STEAM team offers an opportunity to increase student motivation, to engage in those STEM disciplines at critical ages, and also to build those 21st century work skills. Okay. <laughs> So I'm Emily Roberts, I teach third grade at Walhalla, and I've really been using STEAM education since I started teaching because I noticed a need for my low achieving students, they needed an outlet for creativity, and STEAM education really allows that, and you'll often find that many of your learners who uh, are learning with STEAM are low achievers. Um, so a lot of people ask us some different ways that we teach STEAM education in the classroom. We teach it with basic engineering using different things in the classroom. Our first session of STEAM, we actually had them building playground equipment with boxes because that was one of the things that our PTSD was going to be raising money for. So they helped build some different equipment that they, or models of equipment that they might use on the playground. So that was really interesting for them. We also use Lego engineering. We did that for our second session of, team, uh, of STEAM. And we're gonna talk about Lego uh, League Junior in just a minute. We also, as it gets a little bit more advanced, use computer coding and robotics as well, and of course problem and project-based learning like Megan talked about. But as our STEAM team kind of evolved and Megan started talking with Hamilton Career Center a little bit more, we were able to get the grant to begin LEGO League Junior, which is kind of where we are now. So all of those students who are in STEAM team are now part of LEGO League Junior, and those we use everything from coding, robotics, engineering, all that great stuff. And Isaac is going to talk to us about that in just a minute as well. So. All right, so our LEGO League Junior, we, as Emily said, it involved all those components that we felt like were really important to our STEAM team, including using the engineering design process, um, teaching coding, robotics, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. And most of all, it's very fun and engaging for the students, and they don't even realize 
that they're learning. So they just love to come and to play with Legos, but really they're just learning all these other skills as well. So a typical session of Lego League um, start is about an hour long, and the kids are super engaged, which is kind of hard for fourth and fifth graders to be engaged for an hour, but they definitely are. You're going to see a video in just a second of what it looks like. Um, but we start with a problem. So Lego education ha has a different theme every year. So this year's theme is Mission to Move. So the kids are solving pretty much an essential question as they go through this entire season, which goes until May. Um, there's about 12 sessions. But each session, they're answering questions based on mission to move. So they're trying to figure out ways to get to the moon, trying to figure out things that they might need to survive on the moon and things like that. So every session is a question that goes towards that theme. So at the beginning of each session, they're posed a problem. And there's a huge collaboration aspect of Lego League Junior, which is awesome. So they are, they are set up with a team at the beginning of the season, and they stick with that group of five to six students throughout the entire season. So they get really close with them, and they also work on their culminating project as well. So after they meet and brainstorm and talk about their problem that they're solving, they typically have a mini build with their Legos. So the kits that Lego Education has designed are designed for that particular challenge. So all, this, all the Legos are things that could be used and kind of look like things like there might be a water spout. They've got to have water on the moon, different things like that. So they can build things. So a couple weeks ago, they built um, some different things that they might take with them to the moon. So they were building, some of them built oxygen storage and stuff like that. So it was, it was really neat. But after that, they, they go towards their culminating project. So they're, most of them are working with their robot, which Isaac is going to show you in a minute, or they're working with Legos that will be a part of their robot. So when they're doing their robot, the robot has to do different things that it would do on the moon. So they do a lot of coding as well when they're in those sessions on the computer. So after that, again, collaboration, they get back together and they talk about different things that they would do different in the following sessions after that for their culminating project. Here's a video of our group. They um, had built and coded this robot, and it's the same one that you see Isaac has brought here, and we celebrated with a robot dance party. Just use the arrows, there you go. into the code. So this here is um, our Milo robot. He's from We Do for Education, which is the type of robot we use at Legally Junior. And he can do lots of things. And one of the things, he likes to move around and find new things to explore. So he likes to move around. And he can also change his color of light. So change it. And then I don't think he's so he's changing the code on the 
change right now to do right. different things for this robot. And he can also make sound. So I can show you a little delayed. So I've, I made a longer code so I can talk through this. So he's speaking up right now. And now he's going to wait while I talk, and then he's going to change his color. And then he can make a little image pop up on the screen. So I added to that just for fun. Um, he can also play recordings. I can record things on here using the microphone from the computer. So the computer can play. And he has different blocks that make the uh, code, like you can see on your screen. He, the green blocks can make, is his movement, it controls his movement, and the things he physically does, does physically. So in the code you see on your screen, he changes his speed to the ninth, highest speed you have, and then he'll move forward for four seconds, then he'll go backwards for two seconds, and then he'll stop. So I don't think I have that code on my computer right now, but, and then he has red blocks, which are things that you can make the computer do, which include sound, images, and different numbers you can put mathematic numbers for so it can do some calculations and then the yellow I don't know if you can see it on a screenshot those are just some blocks he can use different ways he can start the robot so that's there's some more and more complicated things you can use with the sensors that come in the kit but that's about all that Milo can do right here as you can tell, they have a, a great time. Lego League meets every other Wednesday after school, so they'll meet tomorrow um, for that. And I just want to thank the teacher for coming and sharing. They're very excited about it and giving our students the opportunity to learn at young ages how to not only build a robot, but to code, to create. And the dance video, they created their own dance, so they were having that with their Chromebooks to be able to make the, the robots move to, um, to whatever they coded for. So that's why they were so excited that when they were actually working, one of the students said, this is amazing, like, I can't believe it's working. <laughs> so it, it, it's really fun to go down and see the kids so engaged after school hours when they've been in school already all day long and then they're staying after school and the teachers are staying engaging them even longer for all of our the expo that you can come and see these books, their culminating projects, our expo is in May. May the 26th? <coughs> we'll send you like that reminder after exactly. school in the new gym. So we'll send you all a reminder so you can come and see that and celebrate with us. Anybody else from the back of the hall? That's all we had to share. So thank you so much for allowing us to come to Thank you, Ms. Wells. And thank you for what each of you do. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the public comment uh, session. Did we have anyone sign up? We did not. Okay. Next is approval of minutes for the January 14th work <coughs> session and January 22nd regular meeting. Should have received copies of them. Did you notice any errors? Anything needs to be changed, corrected? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the work session meeting minutes from January 14th, 2019, and the regular board minute board meeting minutes from January 22nd, 2019. I second. Motion and second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Action items. First is local board approved course. Ms. Simmons. Yes. 
Yes, I'm back to talk about the Outdoor Survival Skills course that um, Mr. Kreuzberger is looking to teach during the fourth quarter at Wahala High School. So you just have the um, application that includes the syllabus and standards for the course. And it is designed to provide the students with skills and a positive attitude towards survival in the outdoors with minimal gear or equipment. And also list the course outline there of the different <coughs> skills that they would be learning um, during the uh, course. Also the grading and evaluation with major tests and daily grades and homework and participation as part of that course as well. Any questions, Ms. Simmons? Can I get a motion to approve the uh, local board approved course outdoor survival? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the local board approved course outdoor survival. Second. A motion and a second. A second. <coughs> All in favor? Next is uh, bond resolution approval. Ms. Moore. Uh, yes, sir. We um, need to have you approve our resolution to authorize the selling of our bond so that we can continue with our capital improvement project, and that is a not to exceed $16,500,000. And the sale will take place uh, mid of March and will help us continue with the HCC project and other things that we're working on. Any questions from Ms. Moore? <coughs> Can I get a motion on approval of the bond resolution? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the bond resolution as presented by the administration. I'll second that. And what was the total amount of that, Mr. Sixteen million five hundred thousand. Any discussion? All in favor? And the FY19 general fund budget revision. Okay, I have, uh, as we talked about last week, a revision after um, the updates for revenue from the State Department and also uh, recalculating our salary and fringe. So we're asking that you um, approve the revision of uh, revenues of 99161000 and expenditures of 101899734 and that will leave us for this year with a deficit of $2.7 million. You said 99,166? 99,161. 161. Okay, that's a misprint on the, the sheet there, I believe, is it not? Or no? That's, that's what we've already approved. It's the middle column. Okay, the that's. Middle column, yes. Okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions? Can I get a motion on approval of the revised budget? Chairman, I make a motion that we approve FY19 general fund budget revision. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you. And just for the audience who uh, may have heard that there's a $2.7 million deficit this year, that is true, uh, but it's the school district kind of has a savings account, if you will. Uh, and that's pretty healthy right now. It's about $20 million, and I know that's a lot of money. That's a, a big number to throw out, uh, but when you're looking at a budget of $100 million, that's, you know, just a couple, three months, two or three months of operating money, but we will be spending into that savings account, so essentially what the school district's doing is taking some money from its savings account this year to meet its budget obligations, and then it's our job over the coming year to to balance the <coughs> revenues and expenditures uh, but it's uh, there's not really a problem it's just a decision we're making to kind of spend some of the savings that has been accumulated over the previous years thank you Seneca Middle School property purchase mr. handy yes um, at your uh, well we have for the um, on the screen, we have the information I had shared with you all last week about the uh, area that we're going to recommend. Just a little background information. We started this out um, uh, not quite a year ago, and we had seven or so potential properties. Properties uh, needed to be 
minimum 35 to 40 uh, acres. Um, we were looking for uh, infrastructure. We were looking for road access and certain things as well uh, to, to go through that. And we had a local realtor who uh, we um, contracted with to help us during this situation. Uh, we eventually narrowed it down to three sites that we thought with location, with infrastructure, with lay of the land, etc., would um, work for us that we originally brought to you all back in August, I think it was. Um, and then um, as we've worked through it, uh, one of the options kind of eliminated itself because we needed people to be willing to sell the property and they were not willing to, to sell the property. Uh, it involved multiple uh, pieces of land, so we needed multiple people to be willing to sell and at least one was not. Um, so uh, with, the, with the last two, we had our um, architect uh, that we have on contract, uh, Brian Dykeman, and we had one of our um, construction firms that we have on contract uh, with Trail, Jack Weber, and those. Uh, they visited the, uh, all three of the final sites, um, but when it came down to it, uh, we couldn't get a um, figure from the folks that owned the third option. Um, and then we kind of zeroed in on option, uh, this, which we considered option number two, uh, this part of the Garrison Road properties. It involved purchasing three, uh, or it will involve purchasing three properties if you approve it. Um, as you can see on the map, uh, there's a sliver of uh, land that's a little over five acres on the, the far left that gives us a little more frontage on Wells Highway. There is a 14.9 or so, uh, 95 acres, which is one of the two uh, quote unquote garrison properties that have been for sale for a while. There have been signs out there. And then the second garrison property is 19.3. When you uh, total those up, you've got a little bit over 40 acres. Um, we uh, ask uh, Mr. Dykeman to take uh, kind of the footprint of West Oak Middle, which is uh, what we think that will be the starting point for this uh, school when we build it. and. Uh, at your place, you have that laid out kind of on these properties. Um, I didn't get it in time to include it in the uh, items for the exhibit, but I, I gave you one each at your or your place. And you can see how he's kind of got the, the building laid out there, um, the staff parking, the visitor parking. Uh, the, the detention pond will probably move from the upper corner down to the lower corner. Um, and, the, and that what is shaped like a baseball field is a potential area for a uh, bus lot for the Seneca area if y'all choose to, to do so, um, if you choose to get this property. Um, we're still not sure about, we've, we've done a lot of the testing, the soil samples, the boring, all those have come back uh, good. Um, we entered into a 90 day uh, due diligence uh, agreement to give us time to look over everything, get our testing done. We are still waiting on the DOT and the Office of School Facilities. Uh, we do not think that will be an issue um, uh, if you choose to purchase this, but we have until March 25th um, to get everything done and do the contract with, um, it's three different groups actually. There's an individual seller for the five acre spot and there's two family groups that control the other two um, plats of land. So w it's really three different groups that we'll be working with if y'all vote to go this, this route. Um, you know, we're here now to talk, talk about it. So um, the, uh, the two garrison properties were listed on the market, uh, have been that way. They were listed as a uh, pair together for $800,000. You can get one individually for four hundred thousand. Um, we have um, got a uh, an agreement in place for three hundred forty-two thousand per for each of the two properties, not by acreage, just by site. Um, so that comes in, you know, significantly under the, the list price. Mm -hmm. So we were pleased with that. And then uh, the uh, five plus acres that uh, we had to get. Um, on the Seneca High School side, which gives us a little more frontage on Wells Highway and also another potential spot for um, a, a detention pond and, and that kind of thing. 
that was a little more pricey. That track of land, um, the contract will be for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Didn't that? Because it was be broken off out of another piece of it. It, it goes um, with the twenty two point eight six acres you see to the uh, left of no. it. But didn't you say that ended up being eight acres? Well, uh, they had talked about that, but I think they were wrong. Okay, it's, okay. it's lower five. So there's a three acre piece that looks like a shark fin mm -hmm. that's kind of in there by itself and then the, the person that we're purchasing the five plus acres from is coming out at 22.86 he will keep the remainder of that property he did not want to sell that but he was willing to sell us the, the part on our our side that was not of use to, to him um, so that would be a total of about eight hundred and thirty four thousand for the that is that is correct now um, I took some pictures over the weekend. Um, I don't know how it's going to look, Miss uh, Gibson, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to describe exactly uh, wh where I was standing when I took them. Um, but, um, well, this one I was sitting in the middle of the road. Um, on the <laughs> I kind of pulled over to the turning lane at Joe Lewis, and, and so rolled down my car, went on the other side, and uh, so I took, took this. I, I guess my point in taking these, and you can just go through them, uh, Miss Gibson, this is on the cut through. There's where it's on Garrison Road, and you're coming up to the stop sign. My, my point is, in doing this, is you're going to see that uh, we do understand that there's going to be some site work that needs to be done, but when we did the budget, we balanced all those things out. The way, the way we did it was we looked at how much the property was going to cost along with how much it was going to cost us to get infrastructure there or to get it graded and, and that kind of stuff. So between the realtor, the architect and the construction folks, we had a general idea of what we were going to need. Some places the property would have been more expensive, but it was better prepared to be built on. Um, in this case, uh, the property is not quite as expensive, but it's going to cost us a little bit more to get it ready to, to build on. But it's well within the, the, the budget, budget the that we set for this back in, uh, back in August. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy to try to answer questions if you have them. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Mr. Alexander ha has helped me do a lot of this work. Mr. Dykeman from McMillan, Pass, and Smith, and, and Jack Weber from Trail have all, all been involved. Um, FNR is the third party tester that has done the borings and reported back about the things like the uh, seismic rating and the things that the contractors need to, to do their work. So. Once the DOT signs off on it and school facilities, if DOT signs off on it, school facilities will sign off on it. Uh, that gentleman's been sick. Uh, we're trying to get him out there now. Um, so we hope that in the next uh, couple of weeks that, that we'll have it all finalized and we can go to a closing that you know, uh, we would bring back for Mr. Lee to sign as the board chair, if you agree, and Dr. Thorson as the other district representatives. Happy to answer any questions uh, about it. It looks like the uh, on the retention on the right hand side, that's where it slopes off the greatest, right? As well as on the far left hand side? Yes. Right. So it seems like it's flatter where we're going to be putting the school. Is that not correct? It looks flatter. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the if you you know where it comes together at Garrison and Wales, um, is is kind of a ravine there. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes down, so we'll have to do some moving of dirt and uh, you know filling in some uh, low areas there um, but um, Brian is very confident that there won't be any problem feeding it on there and getting it in, in good shape to to uh, to go if you and Joe I know you were involved in this but remember the Wahala High property remember where the football stadium was it was like a hundred feet to the right and they just basically took that ravine and moved it over so I mean that right nothing that some heavy no I mean heavy I like the way can. the schools laid out and the yeah. way the ravines are the water and I, I think the bus lot on this property will be great because with the access right there to Wells Highway it's easy to get to to Ravenel of course it's really close to Blue Ridge and uh, that will eventually free up that bus lot at Seneca High School since we're so landlocked there to be able to use that bus lot for something else at Seneca High maybe a a future athletic field or something like that. It's like a mile and a third from Seneca High. What are your ideas on the practice fields? 
Uh, the Pratt, well, the practice field, he, he drew the baseball one in there. The baseball one would most likely go away. We don't oh. typically put a baseball practice field there. But there would be a practice football field there because you have C-team football and soccer and things in the spring that they would have. So that would definitely need to stay there. They also, um, kids, you know, they let the kids go out at lunch and, and do that kind of thing too. So, um, we may, you know, we, as we get into it and we see costs and those kind of things, <laughs> Um, you, you know, hopefully you'd be able to have a walking track around it, but we'll just have to see how that goes as we, we get into it. But I, I, our recommendation would be that, that you all approve this purchase for us to go ahead and get. Um, we've got the money put back. We saved it. Uh, Ms. Moore's been holding on to it for us for, for a while. She hasn't physically, but they've been keep, keep holding on to it uh, and wouldn't let us spend it when we tried. Um, so we've got that. And then uh, we'll, uh, you know, I think the design costs and things are going to be the minimal because we're just going to kind of tweak what we have at West Oak Middle because that's an ideal middle school layout. I mean, if you look at it with the halls and the way it's set up, tweak where the front entrance is, tweak the gym a little bit, some things, um, but I don't think it's going to cost us near as uh, much in, in design work as it would normally. So, happy Here's, to answer any other questions. Anyone else? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the purchase of Seneca Middle School property in the amount of $834,000 and it will need to be contingent on approval of DOT and OSF. Mr. Chairman, I move that we purchase the property for the construction of Seneca Middle School for the cost of $834,000 contingent upon approval from the Department of Transportation, DOT, and the Office of School Facilities. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, next, we have second reading approval of uh, two, three policies. Kind first, of, kind of hard to go from uh, purchasing Seneca Middle property to school choice out there, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll make it. A man of many talents, Steve. Um, Policy JFB E one school choice application. Yes, and uh, uh, this is just um, changing the due date to. Um, uh, we'll start this on March the 1st. We've got it set up now, so to go out, we'll open it up March 1st, and we'll run it into through, through the first Friday in June. We tried going all the way through June, but then some principals are off on vacation, and some people didn't get responses in as timely a manner. You know, elementary schools closed down for uh, three, three weeks there through the week of the 4th and that. So uh, we want to give them plenty of time to get that done so they can check and make sure they're qualified for school choice. and. Uh, we also would like to just take this out of the policy and have this as a separate form, and that way when we have to change it, we don't have to keep coming back to you guys every time. So we change it like three years in a row. <coughs> Any questions, Mr. Tancy? Okay, can I get a motion to approve policy JFB-E1 school choice application? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve policy JFB-E1 school choice application as presented. And that is on second reading. On second reading, yes. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Next, policy JLCD, assisting students with medications. And this is the one I told you I was going to, I had gotten some calls from the nurses and that. So what, what we did um, was uh, with, along with Ms. Gibson's help, uh, Chairman Block and our lead nurse uh, kind of, uh, redid the first page, the cover page, uh, and it, in it it requires that any medication uh, that is being brought to the school be brought by the adult, the parent, uh, and, or, and or guardian. And um, so we, we cleaned up that. Uh, this ties directly to what our, uh, we have a, a, a doctor that we keep kind of like on call, uh, that they help us, they sign off for us, and they work you know, to approve our policies or to guide us when there's certain things because we don't have a doctor on staff. So uh, uh, Sherry works with Dr. Stewart's office and he was uh, in agreement that this is the way the, the policy should read from a medical standpoint. So we made those changes in there. Um, the last couple of pages didn't change a, a whole lot at all. 
Um, it, it talks more about uh, who at the school can do things and those kind of things. But uh, the biggest change was uh, making sure that the parents are the ones that are going to bring things in and kids don't bring stuff and forget about it or bring stuff and have the opportunity to, to share <coughs> that kind of thing. So. Any questions, Mr. Heavy? I got a motion on policy JLCD assisting students with medication. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the second reading policy JLCD assisting students with medication. Second. second. Motion, <coughs> second. Discussion? All in favor? And finally, policy JLDBB R suicide prevention, mm -hmm. intervention, and postvention. Um, yes, sir. This um, policy just addresses the importance to protect the health and well-being of our students by having procedures in place to prevent, assess the risk of intervening in and respond to suicide. The policy starts with specific definitions of terms within the policy, um, then moves into the suicide warning signs. So those are listed there as possible suicide risk signs. Um, also included in that section is if it is, are these signs are observed by anyone, they should be reported immediately to a member of the um, school community and it lists some options of people there. Um, it also goes into the suicide risk factors, um, which um, these risk factors don't actually cause or predict the suicide, they're just characteristics that may be uh, modeled by an individual that might be considering or attempting or could possibly die by suicide. Um, then the suicide protective factors are just conditions um, of personal and social characteristics that promote that resiliency or reduce the likelihood of these actions um, happening. So those are listed there. And then it also talks about the risk management, um, meaning uh, the different types of screenings that could be potentially completed with students um, also, the implementation of a particular suicide screener or assessment and what should be included in that tool. And then also, um, it talks about the reentry of a student into school after an attempt or a suicide crisis, um, the importance of having a reintegration meeting, as well as developing a personal safety plan for the student and identifying those support people within the school that could help and support that student. And then the final section of the policy is on the postvention, which just um, goes with the crisis intervention strategies um, that would be put in place um, if uh, to address the social stigma associated with um, the suicide and other factual information related to the situation. Thank you, Ms. Simmons. Any questions, Ms. Simmons? Going to get a motion on policy JLD BB R. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve policy JLD BB R, suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention on second reading. I'll second that. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? And that concludes the open portion of our meeting. We will return shortly to take action on uh, anything in closed session, uh, but I will need a motion to go into executive session for personnel items, employment recommendations, and changes. Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation that we go into executive session for personnel items, employment recommendations, and changes. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you.